comes our audience. Hi everyone. If you'd like to just drop in the chat where you're joining from, that's always really nice to see. And we'll just give it a minute to let everybody arrive. Hi from Vietnam. Indonesia. Bosnia and Herzegovina, Mexico, Poland, Russia. Just give it a few more seconds. Okay, I think that looks pretty much like we have everybody here. Um, so we'll begin. Hello everyone and welcome to Assessment Summer Camp. Um, today's session is all about equipping young learners with vital future skills and we have with us to lead the session Jane Bledsoe and Helen Duran. Jane is the Senior Product Manager for Pearson English International Certificate, formerly known as PTE General, and International Certificate Young Learners, formerly known as PTE Young Learners. She's responsible for innovations related to the current paper-based product and for launching the computer-based test. She's worked in product management roles with Pearson for eight years. Um, Helen is a product manager at Pearson and the publisher of Team Together. Having taught multilingual English language learners in private language schools and summer schools in the UK, Helen has spent the last 13 years publishing English language learning materials for children, teens and adults across the world. Um, so before we start, just to let you know, there will be a Q&A session towards the end of this webinar. So as questions come to you during the talk, please do feel free to submit them into the questions box and we will ask Helen and Jane to answer as many as we can at the end. Um, certificates of attendance will be sent to you in the following days. Um, and finally, the webinar will be recorded and available shortly afterwards um, in case you would like to watch it again or share it with your colleagues. Um, and now the housekeeping is done, I am very happy to hand over to our speakers. Thanks so much, Sophia, and welcome everyone. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today to talk about equipping young learners with vital future skills. I have to say, I love the theme of this webinar series being about assessment summer camp. As a young person, I loved summer camp, but I really hated all the bugs. And so I think this gives you um, the best of both worlds, perhaps, the enrichment of a summer camp um, with some really good, strong topics and no bugs, which is the best part. So let's go ahead and get started. Helen and I are going to walk you through today um, what, what English language learning has to do with 21st century skills. How do these things overlap? And we'll do that from the lens of English language learning. But we know that English language learning doesn't just stop with reading, writing, listening, and speaking, and that there are many other things that are, are going on with our preparation with those skills, as well as the assessment of those skills. So we'll start today with talking about what are 21st century skills. Then we're gonna share some research with you from parents who have English language learners in their families right now. What are they looking for? What are they imagining this is doing? And why, why are they signing their kids up for your classes and taking tests? What, what's in it for them? Then we wanna get some of your feedback. So please have your mobile devices handy. Have those phones, tablets ready to go. We're gonna be using something today called slido.com. If you've attended any of my other webinars, you know I like this tool very much because we can see your responses right on the screen. Slido.com is S-L-I-D-O.com. You can put that URL in your phone right now if you wanna get ready for it. Otherwise, there will be a QR code on the page and you'll be able to take a page of it and go straight to that page when we're ready. Then we're gonna talk about Team Together, which is some great prep material for helping young learners demonstrate, practice, um, interact in with some 21st century skills. We'll talk about our young learners test and how it's used to assess 21st century skills as well as the reading, writing, speaking, listening. 
but regardless of whether or not you're using our products yet, there are some takeaways for you today that you can use to practice in your classroom and practice getting some of those 21st century skills under, underway with your young people. So let's go ahead and get started. What are 21st century skills? So we've put together a broad definition here that we've pulled from a variety of sources. And it is a broad de definition by design. But be thinking to yourself as I walk through this, what do you think 21st century skills means for your students? Um, we see it as a broad set of knowledge, skills, work habits, and character traits that important people in our environment believe is important to success in the workplace. This is really about preparing people to be collaborative, to be creative and flexible. And all those things help them, whether they're going on to future study or they're going on to contemporary careers in the workplace. So 21st century skills go beyond just their English skills to something more. And that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Why do we care about employability and work skills for young learners? We're talking about young people, right? But why is this important? Well, when we surveyed parents a couple of years ago, 2019 in Latin America and also in Europe, we asked them, why are you putting your children into English language classes? What's the ultimate objective here? And parents came back and loud and clear said they want their children to have better employment opportunities. Even children as young as six, Parents responded, even with children as young as six, they're putting them in English language classes because it secures their future for better employment. So really remarkable um, that this is what parents are already thinking about. And yes, they also want their children to be able to study abroad, study at foreign universities. Yes, that's absolutely part of the picture too. But employment came across loud and clear as the most important reason for pursuing um, studying English. Then we asked these parents, well, what do you think good progress looks like? What, what does that look like? Is it, is it demonstrating being able to read or listen or write? You know, we're looking at this from the lens of English language learning. And they pretty much said, again, loud and clear, demonstrating good English speaking skills because they want their children to be able to communicate and communicate effectively. But communicating effectively is more than just English. That's what we're gonna be tackling. What are the other skills that go along with that? If you can speak well, then you're obviously communicating and you're showing um, your collaboration and your listening skills all along with those listening skills, right? And what we are seeing among parents is that it's really important that kids demonstrate that speaking skill, but can also interact effectively with family and friends. The next question we asked parents was, who are you relying on to validate that your kids are getting the best English language learning resources? And the first answer was endorsement by internationally recognized businesses. So they're looking for endorsement by things like British Council and, and the Pearson brand, you know, being on these materials and learning resources. But mostly what they're looking for is your recommendation. So we know you are a really important part of how parents make decisions about what their children learn, what they use to learn it with, uh, and then how they are tested. So your recommendation is quite important to them. All right, so it is time for us to take a quick poll. If you'll please grab your phones and you can use the QR code, take a picture of the QR code if you like, and it'll take you straight into this first question, which is something you're gonna have to type in. What future skills or 21st century skills do you think are most important for your students? So there's no right answer here. Um, you could, you know, focus on resiliency perhaps, or maybe there's something around creativity that you're seeing that 
your students are, are lacking and needing more of. We want to hear what future skills you think are important in your classroom for you to be reinforcing with your students. So go ahead and type it in and we'll see these come up. Critical and creative thinking, absolutely. Technology literacy, good one. Critical thinking coming across as one of the most important things for these students, absolutely. Flexibility, problem solving, teamwork, great. This is absolutely right. Just give this another five seconds. Effective communication, soft skills. We're hearing about this more and more that, you know, intellectually students are prepared for the workplace, but are they ready with the soft skills that we can reinforce with our youngest of learners? Playability, lifelong learning studies for their future life. Being yourself and showing your individuality. I love that one. It's really good. Okay, excellent. These are all really good. And we're going to have a chance to talk about how we have materials to help students collaborate and use their creativity and use their critical thinking skills. So that's exactly where we're going today. So at this point, I'm gonna turn this over to Helen and have her talk a little bit more about future skills and how that's reinforced together. Helen? Thank you. Yeah, there were great ideas you came across, um, came up with. So um, yeah, let's talk about some of those future skills that you mentioned. Um, we can divide future skills into three different areas. So learning and innovation skills, literacy skills and life skills. And, and let's have a look at these in a little bit more detail. So under learning and innovation skills, oh no, sorry, if we go back, um, sorry. If, we, if we just go through each of them one by one and then I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Um, so with learning skills, we've got critical thinking, which you came up with, that was um, a big one. So obviously lots of people um, type that in. We've got creativity, collaboration, communication, and then if we look at literacy skills, these are also really important. Um, information skills, media skills and technology skills. And then some slightly more general life skills that young learners would need. So we have flexibility, initiative, social skills, cross-cultural skills, productivity skills and leadership skills. So lots and lots of different skills that, that young learners will need. And let's have a little look at how you can teach these in the language classroom. And as Jane said, we're gonna have a look at a couple of examples from Pearson's Young Learner series called Team Together. But the ideas I'm gonna go through, um, they're really things that you can do with um, any, any class and, and with lots of different materials. Okay, so first of all, let's have a look at thinking skills. So thinking skills are really important for future success. Alongside developing the language skills, which is why they're in the English classroom, children can learn to think critically, solve problems, analyze, reflect, interpret, reason and hypothesize. And they can do all of these using language learning materials. So don't be afraid to ask even the youngest learners to solve some problems or give opinions make decisions or reflect on their learning. And here are a couple of examples. So here are some big questions to get children uh, thinking about, um, thinking critically and giving their opinions. And this is a way not only to use language, but to develop thinking skills. So there's a question here. What's the best way to communicate with friends and why? And um, another question, do you think we need to be worried about robots doing all our jobs in the future. Hopefully there'll be lots of lovely ideas and a good chance to develop some thinking skills. And here's also another example of um, self-evaluation. So in Team Together, this is at the end of the unit and you can do this um, with any class at the end of the year, at the end of the week, at the end of the term. And it's really great to ask your class to reflect on their learning. And even young learners, you can do this. So there's a question here. 
which lesson was your favorite? Um, and this really is a lovely way to help children to start to reflect on their learning um, and start to be aware of, of themselves, their strengths, their weaknesses, and what they like and what they don't like. So lots of lovely ideas here. And we're going to move on to, um, to the next one, which is creativity. So um, to prepare students for the future, they're going to have to need uh, to think innovatively and to be creative. Children will need to brainstorm. And then once they brainstorm, they'll have to evaluate their ideas and then work effectively with others to implement the ideas. And also there's lots of lovely creative tasks that you can do just for fun. <laughs> uh, we all know that children love creative tasks. So you can set them things to do such as designing something. You could ask them to write a story or a recipe. And then obviously there's lots of lovely arts and crafts activities and drawing tasks. And these can allow for the opportunity for creative language use, for collaboration, and also just the development of artistic and design skills. And um, we'll have a look at a couple of examples here. So uh, here is a mask making activity. Um, this is from Team Together and they're going to make um, animal masks, but you could do it with a paper plate or whatever. It's a lovely way of getting their coloring pens out, maybe a bit of glue, feathers, everything like that. And then they obviously can practice language around animals, um, and something sort of creative and, and fun. But then there's also other things that they can do creatively with language. So on the right hand side, this is um, writing a poem and they've been given a model and some prompts and they're going to ask and answer questions in the poem about themselves and then use that to write their own poem. So this is a really um, scaffolded task to help some creative writing. And something you can even do in a foreign language, um, particularly if you've got a bit of a bit of a structure. And then there's also just tasks to use language creatively. So at the bottom, this is to write some sentences about your town 200 years ago. And the children will have to use some prompts and do a little bit of creative writing with some prompts to help guide them. So creativity can be, you know, lots of painting and um, feathers and, and glitter and everything, but also it can be using language creatively as well. So we're gonna move on now to another one of these learning skills. So collaboration. This one is really important. Throughout their lives, children will need to work with others one-on-one -on -one and in small and large teams. Many common language learning tasks, such as projects, role plays, surveys, interviews, discussions, and all those lovely classroom games, they all involve working together. So the language classroom is a brilliant place to, to do collaborative tasks. Children can learn to listen, to compromise, share responsibility, and be respectful while working together. And here's some examples. So here's a project. This is a project to create a leaflet about a national park. And this is a great task for children to do together. The younger ones could maybe draw and write about a park in your country. And maybe the older learners could do a bit of research online and find photos. And they'll have to be doing this in their group. So again, learning those important collaborative skills. Another great collaborative task is to create a survey. So this one in the top right is on reading habits. And it will allow the class to firstly use language to write the questions, which is obviously important in, in the English classroom. But then they'll also have to work together to ask and answer. They'll have to collect the results, uh, analyze those results, and then report back to the class as a group. And so really good to get them to work in a group. And then another really common um, but useful collaborative task is, out, uh, is acting out a dialogue. So in the bottom right, here the children are going to act out making complaints. This is a really authentic task. It's something that fortunately you do need to learn how to do. And this will require pair work. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you that most activities in, um, in English language teaching materials will involve lots and lots of pair and group work. And so this is a great opportunity 
to learn you know important skills like taking turns and and being respectful things like that so we're going to move on as well we'll have a look at some of the other learning skills so here we've got communication um, it's really important that young learners can articulate their thoughts and ideas effectively listen to others and use language for different purposes and of course collaborate with others um, as communication is the ultimate goal in language learning, you can help children to develop crucial communication skills for life through their English studies. Um, so when they're very young, children are going to progress from developing listening and speaking skills. And then as they get older, they're going to learn the reading and creating written outputs. So there's a couple of examples here of some um text reading text and they're written for different purposes so good to understand the differences between uh, a diary and an email we all know that there's certain language you should use for certain purposes and so obviously that's important to learn you don't want to write your um to your to your future employer using text speak or emojis and things like that and then there's also lots of, um, we've spoken about sort of projects and games and pair work activities because we mentioned them with regards to collaboration. But of course, these are going to be developing those important communication skills, particularly spoken skills. Um, you'll be able to find lots and lots of scaffolded communicative tasks in your course books. You can see here, here's an example, very typical of one that you'll find in a, in a textbook. Obviously, this is from Team Together and it's a sort of scaffolded speaking task. But we mustn't forget that it's also really important to teach children about nonverbal communication skills, such as body language. So that's another type of important uh, communication skills. And then we're gonna move on. We're gonna talk about literacy skills. So through language learning, children will develop various literacy skills. They're going to learn to read and write in English, which is obviously important. They're going to learn how to interpret varied, varied stories and texts, such as those on the slide. But they also need some other literacy skills for the modern world. Through research projects, such as the one on the right, children can learn how to use and evaluate information. They can start to select the best media for their projects and develop critical IT skills. Here, they're going to have to do an internet research on endangered animals. So hopefully fun, interesting topic, but also a way to really start understanding what are good sources of information, what's, um, what's accurate, and, and the sorts of skills that you really need in life, particularly with the fake news and, and disinformation. And you can also cover some other quite important um, uh, literacy skills things like financial literacy, civic literacy, health literacy, and even environmental literacy in, in the language classroom. Okay, we're going to move on. So the last one that I mentioned before is life skills. And these are sort of broader than just like language skills, but also very important. So to navigate the modern world, children will need to be able to do things like adapt to change. Um, they're going to have to balance diverse viewpoints and use their initiative. And projects are a great way for children to start developing some of these skills. Uh, if you put your, your class into teams to do a project, they're going to have to do things like divide up the tasks, uh, set some goals, use the time effectively. So here's a nice task. They have to um, write a guide to a museum. And then some other important life skills. So here there's an example of this culture lesson. This one is about good manners. And this will help children to understand the similarities and differences between people of different cultures. We obviously work in a global world and we're connected all the time to everybody. So it's really good to understand uh, different people from different cultures. And it's also important to be able to use real functional language. So um, here there's an example from this English in action lesson. And this is some sort of real functional language that children might need to know, like making arrangements or being polite, things like that, that really 
you can't really um, get through life without doing things. We all know we've probably all had a situation where we've accidentally offended somebody or said the wrong thing. Um, so really good to make sure that our young learners are, are prepared with not just language, but also social skills, you know, turn taking and being respectful. And that's that's my quick summary. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks so much, Helen. OK, we're going to move on to a, another poll question, because now that we've had a chance to look at some ways to prepare your students for their critical thinking, their creativity and collaboration and things, let's ask you, what's the hardest 21st century skill to teach young learners? And let's see what you come back with here. Again, you can go to slido.com. This should appear as your next poll question. You can see some good answers coming in, critical thinking coming out on top right now. Life skills. And when it comes to life skills, we're talking about things like social skills and resiliency and that kind of thing, right? Critical thinking. Critical thinking is hard, whatever age we're at, right? There's so much um, media today that is, is so tough to dissect and, and be critical thinkers about. Great, okay, just five more seconds. We'll see how this all stacks up. collaboration, communication. So I would bet that many of you have found ways that you can um, prepare your candidates, your students for this collaborative effort just by your classroom activities, I imagine, right? The critical thinking, okay. So that comes out on top as the hardest one to teach. I think in this slide, what we're trying to say is there are ways you can prepare for these things in the classroom and there's ways that we can assess it. Helen, did you wanna make any more comments about kind of how these work together? Yes, yeah, sure, yes. Yeah. So it doesn't surprise me at all that you all say critical thinking is really hard to teach. Um, I think it's hard to teach, definitely. Um, but yes, we just wanted to highlight that we, we looked at Team Together and um, you saw the examples there from Team Together and this is, um, this series does actually uh, teach critical thinking school skills, but it also is accompanied by two um, exam preparation books for the International Certificate Young Learners um, exam, which Jane is going to talk about. Um, and also this sort of whole package works really nicely together. So um, the Team Together books and Top Tips um, books, they'll work brilliantly with um, English benchmark to monitor progress using uh, Pearson's GSE. But I'll pass over to Jane and she can tell you a bit more about International Certificate Young Learners. Great, thanks so much, Helen. Okay, now we're gonna shift gears a little bit to talk about assessment, but before we do that, we have one last poll question for you because I'd like to get a sense from the audience of how familiar you are with Pearson's resources. So I know how much detail to go into. Um, so either you uh, are using courseware and tests today, or perhaps you're not sure, or no, you're not just yet. So we look like right now we have about a 50-50 split um, here of people using our resources and those who aren't. Uh, what we're hoping today is that you have some takeaways, regardless of whether or not you are using Pearson materials today. There are really good suggestions that are in the presentation and some takeaway items for you to use in your classroom, regardless of whether or not you're a Pearson customer today. So this helps me a great deal um, to know that I, I need to spend a little time giving you context about what International Certificate Young Learners is. Looks like um, uh, most of the audience today or much of the audience today needs a little background. That's just fine. That's what we will do next. So let's move along and do that. So this is a quick introduction to what is International Certificate Young Learners. Um, this is a young learner test where students earn a certificate. It is a 
um, a certificate that really helps measure learning literacy and life skills. But it's also a test that's a fairly fun way, if you can call a test fun, a fun way to assess their abilities in English. Uh, we use a real communicative approach. The content in the test is about uh, what they can read, write, understand in listening, and, um, and then how they do in speaking. But the speaking test is done as a game. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a few minutes. It has an emphasis on real life scenarios and the tests follow the path of a family. And so all of the questions are um, things having to do with that particular family and they see that family in every test that they take. So there's consistency. Um, and we don't really require that candidates know a lot about grammar and vocabulary, although that's part of what's tested in literacy. Um, it's really more about understanding context and being able to do and demonstrate your, your knowledge of context. Uh, we primarily gear this assessment to young learners of age six to 13 but about 60% of our test takers are nine and 10. So they're kind of right in the middle, right? Or nine to 11, I would say, is the bulk of where our candidates are for age. We have four levels in this test, which is different than some of the competitive products. And it ranges all the way from pre-A1 up to A2 plus or almost B1. Um, there are seven sessions a year right now. It is a paper-based test, but we're working on a digital test for next year for 2022. So really excited to, um, to be able to come back and talk with you all about that early next year. This is aligned to the SEFRS, as I mentioned, pre-A1 up to A2, A2 plus. Speaking, reading, listening, and writing are what's measured in our score reports and in our candidate performance reports, and that's what you get a certificate on. But as we've been talking about today, all of those skills also uh, are you know, part of the future skills that are, are necessary. You can't really be effective at speaking and listening and reading and writing without some of those future skills in place too. So again, we issue certificates for this test and how teachers and parents are using this test today is as an objective measure of English language proficiency. And teachers can also validate their own teaching based on how many of their candidates earn a certificate after they've gone through a course of study. Parents use these certificates to monitor their children's progress. They wanna know that the money they're paying for those English classes is showing up in their um, students' ability, their young learners' ability to, to speak, to read, to write, to listen. And it is a springboard for more formal exams, but the great thing about this test is that it's fairly low stress, um, particularly when it comes to the speaking part of the test. So we believe that this test does a pretty good job of assessing critical thinking skills at every level. Uh, first words is the, um, the pre-A1 level. Um, and you can see on the right-hand side kind of how the range of different tests take you from pre-A1 up to B1 level. Um, but in each of these tests, you're assessing critical thinking at various stages in that learner's progression, right? So you're asking in the first words test, more questions, more inferences about times, locations, actions of people they know. Um, at Springboard, it's kind of about regular activities, brushing your teeth, what do you do each morning, what do you do in the evening to get ready for bed. Um, Quick March is more about reasoning and past, present, future activities. What are you going to do tomorrow? What did you do last Sunday? How do you spend the weekend? Um, breakthrough is more about hypothetical outcomes. What's going to happen next? Doing some inference. These are all critical thinking skills that we see peppered throughout the international certificate exam. Here's a couple of test examples that we'll run through and then um, we will get through this and then we'll have some time for questions at the end. This is a critical thinking test example. It's a listening part of the test where candidates are presented with a three option picture-based multiple choice. And candidates listen to something and then they have to make an inference with the picture about what's happening. So it requires some critical thinking, some listening comprehension, um, and being able to select the right picture from what they're hearing. 
in literacy, um, what we're doing here is we have different literacy levels, of course, based on the age of these candidates. So the youngest learners at level one and two, perhaps, are going to be matching pictures with words. So they're not having to write yet because we know that writing skills, you know, that takes a little longer. And we're, we're gonna be looking at eight and nine-year-olds um, who generally are taking more like level three and level four. So we have some matching going on, listening to a conversation, making some judgments, drawing a line from the word to the picture. In level in three and four, we're listening to a conversation, we're judging what's going on in the conversation, and we're writing um, something here. So again, this is assessing on a child's ability to listen, comprehend um, some literacy skills, but a lot of comprehension and, and, and some critical thinking here as well. When we're um, moving to some more literacy and social situations, really that um, having that ability to understand relationships with people, the, the test is doing some of the assessment of their social skills as well. Matching utterances to pictures, listening, reading, comprehension, focusing on the interactions with others, what's going on and what you're listening to, what are you judging people's interactions to be, and then drawing a line to the right picture. Creativity is assessed in the test, of course, writing narrative. Uh, again, this is a level four, so this is going to be at the, you know, A2 plus level of the candidates uh, pool. We would be looking here to have them tell a story. So they'll see a series of pictures and they have to write something about what they're seeing and use all of those pictures. And that uh, is, is judging their creativity, but it also is about literacy um, and the ability to, again, make inferences based on pictures. So some critical thinking in this one as well. But the place where I think our test really is unique is in the speaking test. And so I have a couple of pictures here of what happens in our speaking test. It really is about game playing, turn taking, collaboration, and candidates have to demonstrate really good communication skills and flexibility here. So on the left-hand side, you see a group of students sitting around the teacher on the carpet. And this is a game that they're playing with some dice and some game pieces. Each child chooses a color. They throw the dice and they move around this game board. They turn over the card and they're meant to read the card to another child in the group who then responds to that question. And then that next child takes a turn and takes their marker and moves it around the game board and asks another child a question. So there's a lot of interactivity here, but what we're assessing is the candidate's ability to read it, to read it proficiently so another child understands what they're saying, and that child that is being asked the question then being able to say the answer, an appropriate answer for the question. So they're using their listening skills and they're being very flexible in how they're answering because they don't know the question ahead of time. So we're doing a lot in this little game, even though it, it feels fun and low stress to the student, we're assessing a lot of skills in the process of doing the game. On the right-hand side, you see the boy raising his hand. And this is the part two of the speaking test, which is the short talks. Each child picks from a card, um, a card that they don't see ahead of time, and they're meant to talk about themselves for a minute. And then the other children in the group are meant to ask questions. So again, we're doing a lot of collaboration here. Uh, we're making sure that the students understand what they're reading, what they're saying, and the other children have to know enough to be able to ask appropriate questions. Um, so a lot goes on in the speaking test that really is assessing a lot more than just their reading, um, their speaking, their um, listening abilities. So I wanted to leave you with a couple of takeaways that you can find on our website for free, that these are, are fun to look at. You can actually watch a game in process 
Um, it is on our website and they, it's also on YouTube. So you can see the YouTube link on the slide. This is an assessor that is uh, at the lowest level. I think these are pre-A1, A1 students. And so they're just beginning English and really fun to watch, but we have all levels um, on YouTube that you can watch. And you'll see how the assessor encourages the, the students to take part in the game. An important takeaway for you here is you could do this very thing in your own classroom. You don't need to use you know, any specific product to do it. You can do a game with your students and actually have them take turns, read questions to one another, answer those questions and get some real experience with it. And it reinforces all those skills we've been talking about. In addition to the video, on the right-hand side, you will see that our assessor has left some comments about the candidates' abilities. And you can see that um, we're measuring them on vocabulary and grammar and pronunciation as part of the test. But there's other things going on here where you can see that uh, Christoph was challenged a little bit. He didn't really understand. His listening skills probably were not quite as good as they could have been. He answered a few questions incorrectly, didn't really understand the question. Um, so this is something you can look for with your own students. Um, are they listening appropriately? Are they catching the right cues? Are they socially aware? Um, one thing Christoph also doesn't do very well in this little uh, video is he doesn't make eye contact. So we can see that he's got some other future skills that he needs to work on in addition to his listening and his speaking skills. So this is really useful to you if you want to have a look at how a game can be conducted and what you can take from it um, in terms of your own classroom. And we also happen to have um, some little game kits if anyone would like one for your classroom. We've got some game pieces and dice. We'd be happy to send this out to you if you want to um, just fill out this little form. There's a link here, but we'll also follow up in an email to all of you so you can use that form to get in touch with us and order a little game kit. So I think at this point, we have some time for questions. And so I think I'll invite Sophia to let us know what's come through in chat and, and we'll go ahead and, and field those questions now. Yeah, thank you very much for that session. That was really so much um, useful, specific um, advice for how to um, navigate this clearly really important topic for, um, for young learners and their parents as well, as so we can see, really, um, really value this. So we've had a few questions come in. Um, so where should we start? Um, how would you recommend that we communicate the importance of 21st century skills to those parents who don't yet understand um, the importance of them? Yeah, I think that's a, that's a great question. Um, we know from our research that most parents are putting kids in English classes because they know that employability is important. But do they understand that collaboration and communication and flexibility and um, social skills, that all of those things are also part of what your, your child, the children are experiencing in your classrooms? Um, I, I think that it's really important that we, um, we can show, we can demonstrate in uh, the classroom what exactly the kids are learning beyond the reading, writing, listening, and speaking skills. Uh, I know that as teachers that this is something that you probably prepare reports for them already saying, you know, your student was, um, you know, very participative or perhaps uh, shows leadership in the class. And those are things that are, are very worthwhile to share with parents. Um, I think that they know intuitively because they've put them into ling English language classes that all these other skills are required. You really honestly can't do a great job on an exam until you have some of those other future skills that go along with that learning. That's a great answer. Um, on Specifically on creativity, someone has asked, can creativity be learned? This is a big question. Can creativity be learned or is it an inborn or inherent trait? Do you want to take that one, I Helen? Think, yeah, I definitely think you can learn to be more creative. And it's just a case of sort of practicing and doing new things, thinking 
new ways, exploring. You know, you don't have to be brilliant artistically or with language. It's just about playing, isn't it? And just seeing what works, what doesn't work. You know, maybe sounds a bit scary to write a poem, a poem in another language, but you can only try and then, you know, see, see what happens and, and hopefully improve and, and make a better poem the next time. But definitely just enjoy it. You know, kids just need to enjoy their classes and, and play and explore and, and, and learn language and learn skills at the same time. And, and, and they will if they're in having a good time. Yeah. Um, so uh, how well, back to the test, um, how well do students tend to do on the test? How many pass? Mm -hmm. Great question. So um, we have about an 85% pass rate. Um, we most children pass the test uh, because they're well prepared, you know, and they have the guidance of teachers to get them there. Um, so yeah, we, we would say it's a pretty high pass rate in general. Um, and of course, you know, the, the better their literacy skills are, I mean, it's best to start children once they've had some literacy and, and reading and um, writing and that kind of thing, they're going to do better. Um, we've got two questions here about online teaching and learning. Um, so one is the game. The game seems really fun. Um, is there any way that, they, that this can be sort of practiced or taken online? Um, and someone else, else asked a similar question, how to do group work during online teaching? Well, I'll take the assessment part of that. Um, I think that for now, when we talk about digitizing our assessments, we're talking about the written test right now. Um, the speaking test is still being done in person, but I can tell you during COVID what, what some uh, classrooms have done with the speaking test is they've just limited the number of students that are playing the game at a time. And they're wearing masks and they're um, conducting the game in a similar fashion with fewer students. So that's what they've been doing to get through you know, this past year. We are looking though at digital solutions around that game. And why couldn't it be done via Zoom? Um, that, I think that's quite doable. Uh, it would just be a matter of making sure that all the students were engaged in a way that they're turn taking and asking one another questions and, and things like that. So we're looking into that. Um, we will have a solution for the digital form of the written test uh, early next year and we'll keep working on that speaking side. Did you, Helen, want to take the other part of the question? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it's obviously a little bit more challenging doing group work and, and pair work and things like that online, but it's definitely possible. And you can, if they're slightly older, put them into breakout rooms. You might need to um, move yourself from breakout room to breakout room just to check that they're kind of clear. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time to set up to make sure everyone knows what to do and you can kind of drop into the different rooms and see that everyone's okay. Um, if it's with younger learners, you might need to do quite small groups and get parents to help because it might be a bit, bit of a challenge with all the mute and unmute and things like that. Um, and you can also do sort of, you know, teamwork and classwork all together. Um, just, you just need to, you know, maybe have a little bit of help from parents and things like that, but um, definitely try to, to, to make sure that it's not a, a sort of lecture because, you know, kids want to sing songs and jump up and down and play even when, when it's an online class. That's great, thank you. Um, another one on assessment and about problem solving. With problem solving, um, is it the, the process of problem solving that's assessed or is it the solution that they come to? Yeah, it's that, again, really good question. I think it's hard um, to find a way to judge their problem solving without the outcome. You know, we, so they have to have a right answer um, when it comes to the written part of the test. So the, the, what's being assessed then is the problem solving outcome. Um, did you get the right answer in the end? So it, it's a much harder thing to do, right? To assess their thinking along the path. What is the problem solving they're using to get there? But that's something that I think you can do in the classroom um, and you can help them think more creatively with problem solving with some of the activities that Helen was sharing around the creative thinking side. 
So, um, yeah, I think it's outcome that we're, we really are uh, judging in the exam itself. Great, thank you. Um, what ages are the students that take international certificate young learners? They range in age from six to about 13. But I, I might have mentioned that about 60% of them are in that nine to 11 age. And then there's about 8% that are younger than that and 8% that are 10% or so that are older than 11. But for the most part, it is that nine to 11 is sort of the sweet spot for this test because of, you know, they're having to have some literacy and writing skills. Great, thanks. Um, somebody's um, asked a question about motivating. So they teach in remote islands in their country where English, there isn't that much exposure to English. Um, kids don't necessarily see the importance of it. They think it's strange. They're laughing at their teachers when they try to speak English. Um, do we have any sort of tips or ideas for how um, teachers can kind of motivate these kids and um, yeah, it, 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 you know, demonstrate the importance of learning this and learning the world's language. I think when they're really young, you've got to make it fun and, and sort of see the relevance and what they get from, from it. So um, like Team Together, for example, has story animations. They're sort of like little cartoon stories. So they're kind of fun and, you know, hopefully children will enjoy watching them and they've got sort of culture videos. But, you know, when when you're young, you, you like kind of games and, um, you know, video games or, or like not really video games, you know what I mean, like little little um, apps and things that are fun that children will enjoy. And then as they get older, they, they'll start to see how important English is in the world. But I think when they're younger, then the parents will know how important English is and the children maybe just need to, to get that sort of spark and, and, and enjoy learning English and having fun. And then seeing how, you know, how much of the world you can understand through English, the internet, movies, um, you know, there's a lot of, of things that are in the English language books, like all sorts of things. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Um, back to the assessment. Um, does the assessment provide scoring on 21st century skills? Mm. I, I would love for us to get there. Right now, it doesn't. Right now, you get a score on your reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills. But we know that you're not going to score very high on any of those skills if you don't have some of those um, critical thinking and uh, literacy skills that go behind them, right? So while there isn't a score specifically on those 21st century skills, I'd love for us to get to a point where we could report on that. Uh, I think that could be really useful to teachers, even if it's just a classroom tool that says, you know, based on this score, we can tell this about their um, ability to be critical thinkers. Um, so, yeah, I think we, we need to get there because I, I do think that this is something that's going to be important in every part of the world um, as we move forward. So we're not there yet, but I'd sure like us to be. And not just for young learners either, I guess, for adults, for everyone, for exactly. all of us. Exactly. Yes, absolutely. Um, what countries are using the test at the moment? So interestingly, a lot of the countries that are on with us today. So um, we have a lot of students in China, Vietnam. Uh, who else did you mention? Poland. Um, Mexico, Colombia, uh, Russia, uh, we have Italy, we have um, Argentina, Ukraine. Uh, so those are, yeah, we, we're seeing a lot of growth in Asian markets, uh, a lot of growth in Europe, a lot of growth in Latin America. Fantastic. Um, do you have any thoughts around um, the subject of 21st century skills, teaching and assessing them, and, and students with special needs. Mm. How do we make it, how do we make this um, accessible to children with special needs? 
So, you know, as we move the assessment to digital, I think we're going to have a lot more opportunity um, around special needs when it comes to things like maybe dyslexia um, or vision impairments and things, because there's a lot we can do. Um, if the test is on a screen, we can bump up the text size, we can uh, use Zoom text, we can use um, the setup of the page that helps a dyslexic read it a little bit easier. So I think there's a lot we can do with those kinds of um, special needs. When it comes to other special needs, you know, I guess I think we have a ways to go yet. The, um, the speaking test, of course, uh, really relies on the teacher and the assessor at the local level to be aware of what those special needs are and work with them. Um, so that's going to really come down to classroom management um, of those additional special needs. That's great, thank you. Um, and I think we've just got one more question. What can we provide to parents to reinforce these 21st century skills with their kids? I think that there is a lot of uh, things out there right now on the internet that you can find that speak to this 21st century skills and the needs. You can also share the research that we have in, this, in the slides today um, about what parents are telling us they need. And in order to get there and have children that are going to be ready for the future, ready for employability situations, ready for study abroad situations, um, that all of these 21st century skills are going to be required to get there. Um, so happy to have you share these slides with your parents. Um, and, you know, we, we would love to partner with you in what additional things we can do to communicate with parents about just how important this is. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to both of you. Such a, um, yeah, such a sort of, you know, intangible, uh, subject really these soft skills um, and it's really nice to have all these ideas for how to make it uh, you know really concrete and real and assess assess it um, so there are some people in the in the chat who saying they haven't got, received their certificates yet from the last session um, this week's certificates will be sent out at the end of this week so um, yeah if you haven't received yours from Tuesday yet that's fine that's that's yeah, you, you will receive it, so don't worry. Um, and please do take a look at the blog um, and sign up for any of the remaining sessions. There's three sessions left to go um, and all really good, juicy ones. So please do take a look and sign up. Um, thanks again to everybody. Thanks to our speakers and look forward to seeing you very soon. Take care.